Welcome to this episode of CP Conversations. Today, I'm talking to Jackie Robinson. She is the founder of WAWOS, which stands for We're All Working on Something. It's a multinational nonprofit with a mission to celebrate children with neuromuscular de- delays and physical differences. Welcome, Jackie. It's so great to finally have you on the show. How are you today? I'm doing great, Nicole. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, it's my honor. And for people who don't know, your mutual friend, well, our mutual friend, Steph DeGodney, who I interviewed a couple months ago, she introduced me to you. So now I have the opportunity to have interviewed two incredible women, thanks to her. So oh, wonderful. Steph and her inclusion revolution for her son, Max, and their Socks, Max and Me is truly uh, incredible. Yes, I agree. And you have an incredible story as well. And we're going to begin with me actually telling everybody that when you became a mom, the notion that you would one day hear your daughter has cerebral palsy wasn't anywhere on your parenting roadmap. The diagnosis reminded you that we're our own map makers and you resolved to embrace that spirit of adventure and discovery. So let's begin with the day you learned that your daughter, Sophia, who is now 12, has cerebral palsy. You said something wasn't right and insisted on getting her evaluated. What was that experience like for you and your husband? I will never forget the day that I heard your daughter has cerebral palsy. And you know, Sophia, we knew was a fighter because she, we like to tell her that she was very anxious to meet the world. And she arrived at 28 weeks via emergency C-section and she was not breathing when she, um, when she was delivered. But we were told that everything looked good. And so for the first uh, 18 months of her life, we proceeded as though everything was just continuing on Uh, the typical milestones. She was lagging a little. She's our only child. So we were first time parents, Um, but she was identifying objects. She was hitting other milestones. Uh, However, like you said, um, I noticed that she was pulling to stand, but wasn't starting to take those steps. Uh, If I knew then what I know now about CP, I would recognize that when she was stepping towards me, holding onto my fingers, she was doing a typical scissor walk or crossing over the midline, Uh, but I I didn't know. So I did trust my gut, however. I think it's that uh, mother's intuition and just said, I'm not gonna wait until her two week appointment and brought her in. She was fast-tracked to a a neurologist for evaluation, which was our first inkling that maybe something was uh, was amiss. And when when you say fast-tracked, what do you mean? Well, the physical therapist who took a look at Sophia um, told us, she used some words that we didn't No, hypertone, spasticity. And then she said, well, I think uh, she does need to be evaluated by a neurologist. So neurologists felt a little more intense than a physical therapy evaluation. And so we asked why, and she just said, well, just for an evaluation, there's a one and a half month wait, but we can get you in next week. Wow. And while we were delighted that she was going to be able to be seen so quickly, it also, as a parent, you have that sense that this feels a little more urgent. Um, But as it turned out, we know now that early intervention and care is really critical. So while it was scary, we're so grateful that we had Uh, the resources. We're in San Francisco and we had the resources available to to provide that evaluation and and get that diagnosis of cerebral palsy. Um, It it took the air out of the room. Um, And I mean, that's that's really, uh, it's still 
11 years, 11 and a half years later, yeah. 11 years, it's still very emotional. Yeah. And it's that feeling of just everything at, in that moment for us, everything changed. Everything changed. Yeah. And like I ask every parent who I interview and I'm going to, from what I know of your story, I think it was pretty much the same when you go and you talk to these doctors, were you left with the sense of doom and gloom or, or did you have the kind of doctors who made it sound a little more, what's positive, shall we say? <laughs> what was that like? Once I, once I took a breath again, um, I will say that I had done what you're not supposed to do after that physical therapy visit and gone on WebMD and Googled some of those terms. So I had started to create a picture for myself of what may be going on. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that a diagnosis of cerebral palsy was a possibility. And I hoped right. against hope in, in those moments that it wasn't. Uh, but when we heard it, um, I had been, I had at least a little bit of information that I knew it was not progressive. And that was important for me and for my journey. Uh, it's not to say that I was oh, so positive and everything is going to be fine. You, it, it was, it felt a bit very much like a loss for my daughter. I worried sure. about, sure. about what, what would happen. Um, our experience was uh, similar to other parents, which is to say you, we heard a lot of, you can expect your child may never step independently. You can expect that she may have problems feeding. You can expect that she may not talk. And that was- That's a lot. That's a lot. It, it is. Um, and I'd like to see us do better. I understand why, but I do think that- you know, hope is important. Absolutely. Yes. And, um, and the work that you're doing as an advocate, as an adult living with CP, the work that so many others, staff at Max and me, that uh, one of your uh, previous guests um, with Briella and me are doing, yeah. uh, these, these are all incredible stories that are really busting wide open the preconceptions that I had about what yeah. is possible for our children. Yeah. And now you're a part of that too, with everything that you're doing. So a pivotal moment came when Sophia started using a walker. What happened? So as I mentioned, we live in San Francisco. Um, we have a lovely home, but it's a very small footprint and very vertical. So when we received her walker, uh, we thought, well, there's not a lot of runway for her to practice stepping. And we knew that was really important. So we I would throw it in the car and she and I would head down. Uh, one of our favorite spots is Chrissy Field, um, you know, just uh, down along the Marina Green. And she was stepping along and we were chatting. And how old was she? She was about three and a half. Okay. And she commented that people were staring at her. Mm. And I said, oh, well, do you see many kiddos with walkers? And she said, no. And I said, well, they're probably just curious. And it satisfied her for a second. And then mm -hmm. she said, but when I look at them, they look away. Mm. And, and I said, well, you know, maybe they don't know what to say. And truth, she said, well, they could say hi. And that's I, it right there. It is as a parent, as a person, it broke my heart a little bit. And I really feel like that was one of the first times I had to look at the fact that she was understanding that the interaction she was getting was different than what she saw around her. And it planted the seed. I, I can't say it was a big light bulb moment, but it planted the seed where I went home and just started thinking, I need to do something to help encourage her to step and 
encourage other people to look beyond the walker, this device, and see my incredible girl. Yeah. Wow. And so then, then what did you do? Well, you know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. Yep. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, I could hardly sew a button on a shirt, <laughs> but really, I, yes, I thought, you know, I had a very simple idea for a cape that could be attached to her walker and I bought a sewing machine and I signed up for some lessons. I found a lovely local instructor and talked through what I had in mind. And yeah. we came up with a really simple pattern. And wow. the first one I made for Sophia, I, I sewed an old leotard and tutu of hers to it. She was taking um, ballet lessons with neurotypical kiddos and she loved moving her body. So I thought, yeah. well, I can have this on her walker and she can just feel a little more inspired to go out and practice her stepping and her twirling. And right. so that was, that was a, the beginning really. Oh um, my, that's just, you know, what, what I love is that you saw that your daughter was hurting and you created a solution to that problem. And like you said, because I had asked you before, I was like, do you have any background in like fashion <laughs> or design? And, and you're like, no. And I was like, okay, like this is pretty cool because <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's awesome that you were able to do that. So then that leads me into talking about Wawos, your nonprofit. There's actually another great story about how the name came about. Will you tell us about that? Yes. So, um, you mentioned at the, the beginning of the of our talk that WAWO stands for we're all working on something. Mm -hmm. And it is a phrase that my husband and I uh, use liberally um, for ourselves and with Sophia, particularly when she was first recognizing that she was working hard to do things that came very easily to her peers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why weren't her legs doing their job? And I said, well, they're they're working on it and you're, you're putting in the effort and we're all working on something. And it was really important because I, I believe language is really important. And, and yeah. yes, and we wanted to, to acknowledge that she was doing this work, that she was working on a set of things that were different than maybe what she saw uh, mm -hmm. around her, but that each person is working on different things. Some sure. things are, are invisible, sometimes the things they're working on, but really that we're more the same than we are different, whether it's yeah. a visible physical difference like my daughter Sophia has or something else. Yeah, that's, you couldn't have said it better because it's true. We, we, we can't meet a person out there that doesn't have something that they're working on. They're just isn't anybody who can say, oh yeah, everything's just the way I want it. <laughs> right. That's right. I mean, not if we're being really honest. Right. I, I don't think, you know? So, exactly. Yeah. So I know that Wawos is a hundred percent volunteer base. And since it's launched in 2017, you have donated over 1500 capes. I know it's very important to you and your husband to provide the capes for free. Why? Well, we know that everyone knows that having a family, raising a child um, is expensive. Sure. Raising a child with complex medical needs, with the physical difference um, is, a whole, is a whole different ball game. And beyond that, we really wanted to let other families know that their child is seen. And the purpose of the Wawos Wear Walker Capes is to really celebrate the child's interests and their personality, to have something that is more than just a cape, but is a conversation starter, is a connection and can create community because that's the experience Sophia 
had. That's what happened the first of- time you tell us. The first time you, you put the one that yeah. you made, what happened? On her walker, what happened? You went to the park again, didn't you? We went to the back? park again. You're right. We went to the park and she was stepping. I mean, she was just smiles for miles. And people <laughs> were looking at her and smiling. And I thought, okay, check the box. This is perfect. She she wants to step around. But that first day where previously no one had approached her, and as she said, they had looked away, at least at least a dozen people, adults and kids, wow. said, oh, I love your tutu, or, oh, are you a princess, or do you <laughs> like ballet? And she said, oh, I'm a ballerina, I take ballet. Yeah. And you could see that she fe- she obviously was she had delighted. confidence in herself, and yeah. Yes, but more than that, it was challenging other people's perception. That's right. Of what was possible for her and what she was capable of doing. And that really got me thinking, maybe there's something here. And when we started to, when I started to make them, um, I started just by making them myself. And now we're really fortunate. We have um, over 30 volunteers across the country. And we launched Wawos Canada as a, as its own. Thank you. As its own organization. And we um, donate these capes in a variety of styles to uh, pediatric therapy clinics, um, yeah. rehab hospitals, and then directly to families. People contact us directly and let yeah. us know. So if somebody is interested in a cape, do they? is there an application form that they have to fill out or something like that? There's a, there's a form it's, uh, that's on our website. So we're okay. uh, Wawos dot org or wawos.ca for folks in Canada, or you can email where, W-E-A-R, where at wawos.org and just let us know a little about your child's interests and then um, provide us with your mailing address and we'll get them out. You're just so innovative, Jackie, you really are. And I wanted to ask you, well, I have many friends who are adults. Do you have any adults with varying types of disabilities Do you have any plans to make capes for adult walkers? I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's a different thing because the the walkers are bigger, I guess, bigger in size. Oh, we we are certainly more focused on um, pediatrics right now. Gotcha. Uh, Yeah. That said, if we had a request for (laughs) for uh, from an adult. Okay, I was putting it out there because I was wondering if somebody listens to this or watches this and they say, wait a minute, I'm an adult, but I want one of those cool looking capes if that was something, you know, that they Absolutely. could contact. Absolutely. Yes, I mean, and the, the the wonderful thing about the very simple um, pattern that I made is that we have it in a, in a variety of styles. So I have made oh. a few for That's adults. A, f- a few adults, a couple of teenagers, you know, one who loved the Rolling Stones. Oh, so that's cool. For her and, but really our focus has been on and children. That, yeah, well, on the children, on the diagnosis and the first time they're prescribed the walker, there's the idea of having them still be seen, you know, right? having a walker delivered and for, for not just the child, but the whole family right. to say, we see right. your child, they're not defined by their disability. Right. They and it are- becomes part of their personality because you tailor it to, to like you said, the things that they like. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I just, it's just a, a great idea. So how has Wawos impacted your family and the families you serve? Oh, well, you know, I was always delighted the idea of being a mom. And it is my great joy to be Sophia's mom. And when I think about, when I thought about being a parent, you know, I think a lot of parenting is problem solving and mm-hmm. you're raising um, kind, resilient humans. Yeah. And, you know, nothing is promised. So it's not, my response to her diagnosis, well, it certainly shook me and my husband sure. um, initially. We really said, listen, she is the same amazing, bright, caring, curious mm-hmm. That's right. girl 
who yeah. she was yesterday before we got her diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So our responsibility is to make sure we're encouraging her to be the best Sophia she can be, yep. not compared to anybody else, but just to the best of her abilities. Yeah. And I think that that has been a great example um, for us just in our little family of three and that we try to we try to uh, share that with with others through the work our nonprofit is doing it's it's such a great message for everybody really it really really is and I thank you for spreading it July is disability pride month and I was interested in hearing how do you encourage Sophia not only to be proud of herself but proud of her disability as well and what your take is on that? Yes, I'm so excited to be a guest um, with you during the month of July in Disability Pride Month. Uh, it's not um, is not a, a celebration that I knew existed. I didn't either. You're not alone. Okay. Many, and many of it. So I'll take the pressure off you right there. Don't feel like you should have <laughs> known about this because unfortunately it's not a national day month and it's not, the media doesn't really talk about it. That's why advocates were doing it. So now you're part of that now too. So go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I think the thing is that we, when we know better, we can do better. And My Angelou so, said that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so much of learning is, of, so much of life is learning. And so now I know, and just as I, you know, learned more about cerebral palsy, as I learn what are the best ways to encourage my daughter to yeah. embrace her whole self, love her whole self, because she is worthy and valuable and incredible. Yes. I yes. think that Disability Pride Month is really um, an amazing opportunity to amplify the stories, yeah. the many stories that are out there. And yeah. I wanna say too, it's so important that this, like I'll, I'll start with the month, but this is not just a month, it's a movement. And the work that so right. many right. people are doing to yeah. increase visibility yeah. for representation, visibility, visibility yeah. inclusion, yeah. which I know is very important to you. And you, I, I'm going to, I'm going to close with this. You also believe that cerebral palsy is the least interesting thing about Sophia. What do you mean by that? That she is not defined by her diagnosis. She is a skier. She loves ballet. She loves cooking. She's interested in robotics. And so no one else is going to reduce her to a diagnosis of CP. That's and she right. needs to lead yeah. the way by really leaning into all of her interests and yeah. her personality and, and just living her best life. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and when you guys check them out at wawos.org and also on Instagram, make sure you do that because Sophia, she gives tips on Tuesday, Tuesday's tips. She, she makes videos. She needs to go into the news business. I don't know if she has any interest in being a reporter or something like that because she's a natural. I mean, you've told me that when you make these videos, mom, no, I got it, you know, and she, she doesn't have to take, do many takes. And I'm like, okay, we've got a public speaker in the making here. So maybe yes, that'll. You, yes, you know about Toastmasters and <laughs> I'm delighted to see how confident she is and why shouldn't she be? That's right. And what, that's the message, right? Yes. For, for all of us, why shouldn't we be proud of all of who we are? And if that includes having a disability, which 25% of the population does, and even more people will have some type of disability in their lifetime, hey, you know, it's okay. And you're, you're still you. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's accessibility, access to adventure, inclusion mm -hmm. is yeah. critical because that gives yeah. everyone permission to go out into the world and explore. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So 
where can people find you guys? I know we mentioned the website wawos.org and then wawos.ca for the Canadian site, which I'll make sure is in the show notes. But for social media purposes, where can people find you? Yeah, we have a Facebook page for Wawos and Wawos Canada. Uh, similarly, Instagram, Wawos Org for yeah. the US and Wawos Canada. Uh, please give us a follow. Let's share your stories and uh, get in touch. Yeah. And, and aren't you looking also for volunteers if there's people out there who know how to sew and they would like to help you? Absolutely. We have, like I mentioned, a really wonderful guild of, of crafty people. Um, you don't have to be an expert sewer, but if you're interested, you can send us an email to sew at wawos.org and we'll get a pattern and all the details out to you. Yeah. Jackie, thank you for everything that you do. I, I mean, it's just an incredible story because you know what? You could have made the walker for Sophia, you would have solved her problem. And that could have been the end of it. But no, you said, I want to help other families. And this is what you're doing. And you're doing it now in two different countries. I'm sure there will be more to come. And I can't wait to hear about it. Hopefully you'll take me along the journey with you and, and update me for friends. So I'll, I'll find out everything out. But thank you so much for everything you do. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And I just can't wait to see what the next thing is for you, because you're awesome. Thank you so much, Nicole. And you will definitely uh, be on this journey with us. You are, and I'm so grateful to you for your example.